We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the world. The government Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week this is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest and everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the recent pullback that started last night on Bitcoin. As you guys know, Bitcoin has rallied over nineteen thousand dollars in less than ninety days and in today's episode of coffee and crypto live we are going to be talking about that pullback and where it may lead and why it very well may be just a short-term correction and not an actual larger term 20 to 30 percent pullback as you might expect to see we've got a quite a lot to cover today and we also have a climate of crypto episode coming out today that you are not going to want to miss i believe that it may just be one of the best climate of crypto episodes that we've ever made from an organization standpoint, the points I really am looking forward to you guys seeing this is almost, I think it's like 17 minutes. So it's going to be a really good piece of content. Stay tuned. That'll be dropping. Uh, the plan is for it to be at 2 p.m. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Really excited to be here today, guys. Really excited to bring you guys this content. Also really excited that we get to come together every single day and talk about the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets because I firmly believe that one of the best places to be investing in your future for your wealth's sake and for being a better individual, being uh, self-improvement, all these different areas is in cryptocurrency right now because it's going to challenge you. We are going into the summer harvest right now and all of the prep work that we did in the winter that just passed and the spring that we are in our that we are finding ourselves in right now is going to come to fruition and we're going to be able to reap a bountiful harvest come bull market, especially on into actual summer of next year. So now is the time to be buckling down, getting on top of your personal finances, getting on top of your investment strategies, getting on top of your understanding of cryptocurrency markets and also on top of your education in the form of technical analysis and that is why even before we get into it today today's episode of coffee and crypto is brought to you by our very own cryptocurrency technical analysis academy you're going to see quite a lot of ta in today's video technical analysis is the art and the science of reading the price action of charts to make informed predictions about where the market will go next and technical analysis is an art form that goes back almost 140 years to a man named edward dow you may have heard of him if you haven't i'm sure you've heard of a couple of the things he founded namely the wall street journal and the dow jones industrial average and he created technical analysis to be able to make predictions about what the market would do next so that investors could be better informed in their purchases not only where they buy but also where they sell technical analysis works it is the analysis that all other analysis types point back to it is the absolute nexus of how you are going to do financial analysis on any market and i firmly believe that we have this number one course teaching number one academy teaching how to do technical analysis in cryptocurrencies make sure to check out ct2a with the link in the description box down below we've helped over 5,000 students go through ct2a and counting so make sure to check that out we've got mike lowry in chat as always christina orozco orozco is in chat good to see you i think you've been here before so welcome back my friend joe bollier's in chat oj the star killer is in chat og the star killer is in chat. Alex Nivo's in chat. Nomad Gambit is in chat. No name is here. Zach Keshmar is in chat. Jacob S. Victor Sleeves, Crypto Military Vet. Music Tags. Danius Selkis. Selkis? Selkis. That's a cool name. Adam Kayana. Kayayan. Kayayan. It's a cool name. There's so many cool names that tune in every day. Mr. Check1984, Eddie Collins, Peter Liu, Jason Barry said, smashing the likes and saying good morning, Jeb. Good morning to you as well. Paul M, the future is bright, the future is orange. That's right. Crypto Mini Bikes in chat. Gary Gensler is in chat with two R's. Mike's in chat. Ernesto Flores is in chat. And Gabriel Nieves Ramos is in chat. And Rob Bigulski and Tashi Sherpa, NYC. Good to see all of you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Let's jump on over to CoinMarketCap. Right now, Bitcoin is trading. <clears throat> 
at $43,600. It is up only 0.82% in the last hour. It is down about 1% in the last 24 hours. We're going to talk about that little correction, see if that's going to build into something larger. We are still, though, up nearly 16% in the last seven days. That is very exciting. Ethereum, up 12% in the last seven days. Binance, not moving a whole lot. XRP, not moving a ton. It's up 5% in the last seven days. Solana's up 8%. Cardano's up 17%. These cryptocurrencies are gradually moving to the upside. So you want to go ahead and jump on in when you can. Dogecoin up 15%. Avalanche up 26% on the last seven days. Chainlink up 3.4%. Polygon up 6.3%. Polkadot up 15%. Sheeb up 18.16%. Bitcoin Cash even up 10%. Cosmos up 5%. So, across the board, market's doing very well in the last seven days. And that's kind of the context that we need for our conversation today because the conversation is going to be slightly bearish. Removing our drawings here, you can see that Bitcoin is now working on its second red candlestick after this massive rally. We saw a huge rally from about $37,000 all the way up to $45,000, which if you'll recall, 45k was our first level of three levels of resistance that we were talking about all the way back when we were trading at 37. $45,000 is a level that we have seen in play for a very long time because it has to do with multiple highs and lows back in our previous bull market. We had lows here on 45, almost a high here, trading around it here. Uh, support levels and resistance levels found on 45 here. Support, resistance, resistance, resistance. And then we, of course, found resistance right in the zone around 45 to 50 as well. 45 to 50, excuse me, 45 to $50,000 is a very significant zone of resistance that Bitcoin is going to have to contend with. And of course, we did get stopped out there for the time. We anticipated that either 45, 48, 5, or $50,000 would be the catchment area that Bitcoin would get stopped at. Looks like we got stopped at the bottom of those three levels. Right now, it is starting to become pretty safe to say that this rally is over for now, but not necessarily for good. On the hourly chart, you'll remember that we've had this parabolic curve drawn for the last several weeks on Bitcoin and Bitcoin did genuinely manage to follow that parabolic curve the entire way up. Well, you can only go through a parabolic curve for so long before you run out of time because the curve is not far from you on the x-axis, on the time axis. And so you end up trading through it. And that's what happened. We ended up trading through that uptrending para uh, parabola here. And that ended up giving us some bearishness. If you don't know how to draw that parabola, I would definitely recommend you come on over here to your, uh, to your paintbrush tool and then come down. You're going to find a curve. It's right below my... Um, it's right below my uh, little box down here. So hi, it's like right behind me if you're seeing this down here. And then you can just kind of draw it right there. There you go. And that parabolic curve, Bitcoin had been following very closely, but that parabolic curve was not to last and we did end up trading through it. That's where we find ourselves today. So what's going on with the market and where will we go next? Well, <clears throat> A couple of days ago, Bitcoin was in a symmetrical triangle pattern, which was pointing to the upside uh, with uh, price targets pointing to the upside. We had a bullish trend coming into that symmetrical triangle pattern, and we had a bullish movement coming out of that symmetrical triangle pattern, or at least we anticipated that it would. And so Bitcoin actually did rally to exactly the price target, about $44,500. Then we formed another bull flag, but I wasn't as confident in this bull flag. If you remember yesterday, we talked about some reasons why I was not as confident in this bull flag compared to this bull flag. We've been talking about a $50,000 Bitcoin, but we're not exactly sure when that's going to happen. Bitcoin was really going to need to break bullish out of this bull flag very strongly to be able to go to 40 uh, to go be able to go to $50,000. That's not quite what happened. We had a bull flag with a price target, as you can see from the extrapolation right here, pointing up to 46.5, but that really wasn't even enough to push us all the way to 50. There are reasons that I believe that $50,000 could be around the corner, but at the end of the day, what we talked about yesterday if you'll remember to yesterday's Coffee and Crypto, we discussed how the MACD was not showing any real signs of turning bullish. It was showing more signs that it was going to continue to the downside. We were analyzing this market right about here, about one more candlestick over. So we were analyzing this market right here at 10 a.m. Just go one candlestick forward right here. This is what we, this is the analysis that we were looking at yesterday. This is exactly what the chart looked like. And exactly what I said was that the histogram looked like it was sideways. It did not look like it was actually converging bullish on itself, which meant to me that I didn't see any bullish cross coming in anytime soon. Something drastic would have to change. And until further notice, the trend on the MACD is bearish. Furthermore, on RSI, we said that RSI had dipped below the 14 interval moving average over here and was setting lower highs. It was not setting higher lows as it had done prior 
to that larger breakout where we were setting higher highs, higher lows, two higher highs, three higher lows. That was great news. That was also bullish RSI divergence, I believe. Actually, no, it wasn't, but it was an uptrend on the RSI. MACD was converging bullish on itself very strongly. So we were able to kind of predict, all right, a breakout's going to come here because a lot of our indicators are lining up. We've also got Lux Algo coming into play back here on this chart, and that was very helpful as well. We had a price target up here. But more recently, we had seen the sell signal come into play. We pushed deep into the reversal zones, often indicating that you're going to have a major correction unless the bulls are just massively strong. We didn't have any reason to believe that they were just of a huge degree, um, that they were just massively strong at the time. And so this is what our chart looked like yesterday. We had to take profit down here at 43 to 42.5. RSI is bearish and finding resistance. MACD is continuing to drop and no signs of stopping. Run forward the market. And unfortunately, you can see that that's exactly what happened. Let's just, just catch something really quickly right here. This sell signal was not confirmed, but even unconfirmed sell signals we ought to pay attention to because the levels oftentimes are still important nevertheless. Our level was at 43.1 down to 42.5. Where did the market drop? $43,000, right in the middle, or $42,800, right there in the middle of that sell signal. Now, by the way, that sell signal updated its take profit. Oh, excuse me, no, it didn't. It was still right here. So this is the same take profit that we were talking about from yesterday's analysis. Well, right now, and you just saw it there briefly, the market is actually starting to flash something a little bit different. And for a second there, I don't know if you saw that. I can't get it to come back up because you have to get the, the market has to move for it to show back up because it hasn't confirmed yet. But Lux Algo briefly here flashed a buy signal. And so the reason that that's exciting is because if Bitcoin does flash a buy signal on Lux Algo and it does get confirmed, then some other things may come to pass. I want to talk about something really quickly. How did we have an indication that this rally was going to come? Well, MACD was converging bullish on itself. We had higher lows on RSI. We had a buy signal on Lux Algo. We had volume that was generally starting to increase. We're starting to see a lot of that right now. There it is. Look, oh, it just disappeared. You might have to scrub back, but there it was. We only need to go about $10 to the upside to get a buy signal on hourly chart. And of course, buy signals lock in and confirm when the candlestick closes. Yep, there it is. Okay. And a lot of people are watching this live right now, just so you, just so you know. As far as not just watching this stream, a lot of people are watching that, but a lot of people right now are watching this market live and they're watching that strong buy signal. Take note, that's also a strong buy signal. It's not a normal buy signal. It's a strong buy signal. And if that gets confirmed, that's big news. So while we were bearish yesterday and it led us into this correction, it can be tempting to say that that is just going to continue. It can be tempting to say, all right, we're just going to continue this massive downtrend. But some of the technicals on the hourly chart give us hope. On the hourly chart, we're looking right now at an increasing histogram. The histogram is, is greatly converging on itself. We fell back down to baseline, back to zero. So we reset the histogram. As far as histogram on MACD is concerned, and as far as RSI is concerned, on the one daily, on the one hourly chart, we are in fantastic shape. We fell all the way back down to baseline, even below baseline. So we're fully reset on the hourly chart, ready to go on another run. Nothing's stopping us there. This MACD cross could be coming in in the next couple of hours. And this RSI uptrend just broke above the 14 interval moving average at the same time volume is starting to increase we hit the take profit on this sell signal the reversal zone is coming up to meet us as support right here on the hourly chart and at the same time the coup de gras the thing i wanted to mention the last there's bullish rsi and bullish macd divergence appearing right now on the one hourly chart downtrending levels of support on hourly chart macd and rsi and uh we are also seeing, at the same time, um, uptrending levels of support. Uptrending levels of support on um, on the price action. So that's very encouraging, very, very, very encouraging news. Here's the deal, though. We can't just look at the hourly chart, because if we just look at the hourly chart, then we're going to potentially run into a little bit of tunnel vision. And so we also want to look at some of the other charts. Let's look at the four-hourly chart, for example. On the four-hourly chart, we are just now seeing a bearish cross on the MACD. We're also just now seeing a confirmed sell signal on the four hourly chart. Now that confirmed sell signal is no longer confirmed. Well, excuse me, it is confirmed. This this sell signal is be has been confirmed. It gives us a price target down to 42,000 to $41,000. RSI is dropping down. So what do we listen to? Even if we look out on the daily chart, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, out on the daily chart, the candlesticks look absolutely abysmal. They look atrocious. Like this is this is disgusting. I'm sorry to say it. It's just a very ugly candlestick. It's a candlestick that is a spinning top 
after a massive rally, and that really does give us a lot of indication that a large correction could be coming either in price or in time or in both. So what gives? What do we do with this information? Well, part of it is a wait and see game, but part of it also is looking at our historical analysis. There are two different things that can happen here. There are three different things that can happen here, and we have historical precedent for all of them. We had a massive rally in this part of the market back here in October. Then we had the exact same two candlestick formations show up. A spinning top followed by a hammer. Spinning top, hammer. That is exactly what we're looking at right now. Spinning top, hammer. And so when we're looking at that market, what happened? Well, Bitcoin continued to rally to the upside, but it was correcting. Bitcoin had so much exuberance that it was able to correct and reset its baseline, even with an uptrend going on. Back over here, though, we saw a similar thing. Massive rally, hammer, and then spinning top. Backwards in the direction of that, as far as they showed up in a different order. But still very similar. Hammer, spinning top, another hammer slash spinning top. And then we traded sideways. And then if you go even farther forward, even farther back, you're going to see that there was a shooting star, so it's upside down hammer, and a spinning top, indicating the top of this market back over here. So this is a very common topping out formation that we're seeing right now. Huge rally followed by a couple of red candlesticks to the side to the sideways direction the good news is let's just start from worst case to best case scenario the good news is we are seeing that in all three of these instances bitcoin went through a short-term correction and then it continued to rally why because we're going into a bull market guys and so on the daily chart we want to keep in mind that things could turn bearish anytime now but we also want to keep in mind some of the longer term fa factors. And I'm not going to get, I'm going to get into those a little bit today, but I also want to leave it a little bit for Climate of Crypto. If you guys haven't seen the Climate of Crypto series, I upload it at 2 p.m. every Thursday. And I'm really excited about that series because I get to kind of, how shall I say this? Peel back the face of the market and reveal the untold truths of what's going to happen next. There you go. Well, it's just some, something poetic, right? In Climate of Crypto today, you're going to be hearing a lot of reasons why I believe that a massive rally, potentially even an all time high run, could be happening. Uh, relatively soon. I give it over a 90% confidence that it's coming next year and a decent confidence that's well, you're gonna have to watch the you're gonna have to watch the video for that. But my point here <clears throat> is that there are quite a few longer term fundamentals. And what I'm trying to do here is construct for you the three different major time frames you need to be looking at. If you're a technical analyst, then you will know that there are three major time frames you need to be looking at short, medium, long. And you need to be looking at all three of them, and you cannot neglect any one of them, especially the shorter two. The longer term, you can look at once a week or so, and you'll, you know, it's not going to change a whole lot out on the monthly chart in a week. But especially the daily and the weekly chart, you got to look at daily so you really know what's going on. That's why we do this show daily. That's why Climate of Crypto, which looks at the longer term markets, happens about weekly, matches the cadence that you should be doing that longer term analysis on. And so on the short term, the market is actually reversing and turning bullish, which is a good sign. And that can kind of trickle up to the next time frame, which is the medium term. The medium term being on like the four hour to the daily chart. The daily chart right now is looking slightly bearish, but that can change. We've also still got a lot of bullishness coming in here on volume. RSI, even though it is correcting, is still at 76. MACD is still very, very, very far to the upside, even if it's not perfect. On the daily chart also, we have a buy signal. We've not quite gotten to the take profit yet. The next take profit on the daily chart buy signal is between 46.6 and 49.1. So even though we're going through a corrective movement here, I actually still have some confidence that the bulls may have some more fuel in the tank. Part of the reason for that is that out here on the daily chart, we've not just gone through a flash crash. This has not been a blow off top, as a lot of times you will see. You have seen examples of blow off tops where the market tops out a couple of days later or immediately it just jumps off a cliff. Bitcoin has not fallen off the metaphorical cliff as you have seen in many of these markets in history. Instead, Bitcoin is flagging. So on the daily chart, to, um, I forgot who said it, but uh, to uh, one of our commenters points, one of our regulars points, this is starting to look like a bull flag. It's starting to look a lot like a bull flag. In fact, it's actually starting to look like a bullish descending wedge. I'll say that again, a bullish descending wedge. Does that sound weird? Yes, it does, but that's okay. On the hourly chart, we've got downtrending level of resistance, downtrending level of support, it's not quite converging, so actually we wouldn't call it a wedge. We would call it a flag. And it is starting to look like a bull flag, right? So the original concern was that it was a bull flag, uh, excuse me, that it was a bull pennant. Pennant's a triangle pattern, a flag is square. The original concern was that this bull pennant broke bearish, but now 
it may have broken us far enough to the downside that the Bulls were able to regather enough strength that they're able to bounce on the trampoline and rally higher. And again, that's showing up in the technicals down here on the hourly chart. MACD, RSI, Lux Algo are the three that I would cite. And we do have this buy signal coming in on Lux Algo. If in 40 minutes from now we close this hourly chart candlestick with this green buy signal, then we're going to be in good shape. And I will start to make predictions that market goes back up to 45. I'm actually not massively bearish on Bitcoin right now. A recovery could be happening at any moment. And that is a little bit strange to hear come out of my mouth because I am the one that's always cautioning you guys whenever the market has already rallied, you know, 80% in 80 days. I mean, it's ridiculous. 77%. 86 days. I am the one that is normally going to caution you, and I am going to caution you. But I've got a hunch, and I could be wrong, and I'm willing to go out on a limb and be incorrect because that's how we learn. I'm willing to be wrong on this, but I've got a hunch that this bullishness is not over. I've got a hunch that the bulls still have some left in the tank. And I'm fallible. I don't know the future for certain, but I can tell you right now, that is what my hunch is. And that's what my intuition is. And sometimes you've got to go on that. You know, one time I was in a convenience store, like two o'clock in the morning. I was out with some friends. I just turned 18. And I just had this, like, all the hairs on the back of my neck just stood up. I was like, it seems weird. Something, something's not right here. I don't know what it is. And I grabbed my friends. I was like, we need to go. I don't know why. We need to go. And I got home the next day. And I talked to my dad. I was like, I don't know what happened last night. I just had this weird, it was like a spiritual. Like, it was before I was even a believer, though. It was like, I just like knew we need to go. Something weird was going to happen. Nothing bad happened. But I talked to my dad about it. My dad's like, yeah, you know, you need to listen to that sometimes because sometimes your intuition is telling you something and you need to pay very close attention to it. And sometimes you just need to trust it because it'll keep you out of danger. And so with that advice, I went and created the video in CT2A called Intuition. And it's funny we're talking about that right now because I've got a hunch that the bulls are not done yet. And just even as I was saying that in the last two minutes, Bitcoin rallied $150. Um, funny how that timing works out sometimes, isn't it? Well, hang on a second. We might be seeing a, a breakout right now. Huh? How about that? <laughs> well, if that isn't just a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Bitcoin going through a rally right now, and I was just about to get to that. This uptrending level of resistance. You see how it stopped out there? That's a resistance line that I just drew for you a second ago. Might break through it. That uptrending level of resistance is the bottom of this bull pennant. I've had a hunch that we were gonna that we were going to rally here. It's funny, funny how that works, isn't it? In the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, that video is right here. It's called Intuition. This video is a timeless classic. I'm just going to put it that way. I don't mean to pat myself on the back. You guys just love this video. And it's kind of teaching that concept that I just told you. God gave lions an instinct for a reason. He gave you the ability to sense that there's like a cheetah in the, in the bushes for a reason. He gave you that intuition for a reason. I, I used to call it gut feeling, but people got on to me. They're like, that's not professional enough. That sounds like some hokum. So I changed the name to intuition, but it's the same thing. It's your instinct. It's the intuition that I just have a feeling that something's going to happen here. And it's not a feeling from a lack of experience. I didn't start listening to that until I'd been doing this for a year or two. And I had a lot of experience under my belt. But sometimes there's something going on in the subconscious and you don't know what it is. But it just, your brains are experts at pattern recognition. And I just don't want you to miss that. Because there are times where once you get to the point of being an expert in something, you've just got a certain intuition that something's going to happen, and then it just will. And it, and you guys see it happen sometimes on the charts right here. Every you know, Once every month or two, I'll do something, I'll, I'll say something, and then it'll happen right as I say it. And that's the intuition going. I'm not, I promise you, I'm not trying to brag on myself. It is a gift, and I am very blessed to have it. But I know that it's something that everybody can have just through experience. So let's reach out for just a second and watch the market live because I think a breakout may be about to come. Let's see. Peter Liu said ETH. Yes, we are going to look at ETH here in a minute. It's up to 2300. Let's see. ETF is next month. No way we have topped out. That's part of what we're going to talk about. It's ancient. It's in our DNA. That's right. And you can use it. All right. Let me see if I can pronounce your name. Um, Danius Selkis. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, greetings from Lithuania. That's so cool. Um, it's nice to be mentioned. Thanks, Jeb. Greetings from Lithuania. I'm following you since 2020 and finished CT2A. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for going through CT2A. I hope that it has been helpful for you. Jay said, that's knowledge and the Holy Spirit. That is actually, that is absolutely correct. Jeb doesn't just speak truth. Jeb is the truth. I'm not the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. But I do my very best to speak the truth. But thank you, Chris, for the compliment. I'm very appreciative of that. Naked Director said, tempted heavily today to sell most of my stock and go on into crypto, but wouldn't be too diversified. 
Please tell me if this is a terrible idea. Great question. So my investment strategy, I have outlined many times, and I'm going to continue to do it and just drill it into your head. Um, I think it's important to build a baseline investment strategy and then layer riskier bets on top of that. I think even if you're a billionaire, you ought to be investing in the S&P 500. Put it that way. I think even if you're a billionaire, you ought to be considering getting you know, some uh, real estate investments. You ought to be considering getting some Bitcoin. Because slow, gradual returns over time are the place that you're really going to make the most wealth. So ensure that you have, for an individual private citizen that's not making, you know, a million dollars a year, but you're making 100, 200, 50, 40, 30, whatever, uh, you know, a, a average middle class income. Make sure you max out your Roth IRA every year or at least get close to it if you can. Um, take your 401k match, do that in the stock market, and then dollar cost average into crypto. If you are a noob in crypto and you are new here, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And I would love to help you become wealthy in the cryptocurrency market. So subscribe to the channel if you think that you can find value here. If not, that's totally fine. It is nice to meet you. But if you're a noob, I would recommend ensuring that at least half of your investment portfolio is still in the stock market because if you don't know what you're doing in crypto it does carry with it a degree of risk even just holding it there are not as many security mechanisms in crypto as there are in the stock market you don't get hacked and lose your stocks that just doesn't really happen you can get hacked and lose all your cryptocurrency there are plenty of cryptocurrencies that can go to zero that doesn't really happen too much in the stock market if you're invested in the s p 500 it just doesn't really work that way just the mere thought of investing baseline in crypto carries with it a degree more risk than the stock market so you should remain invested in stocks that being said as your degree of expertise increases in the cryptocurrency market as mine has then i have more of my investment in crypto right now because i can see through the lens of technical analysis that a large bull market is coming i can i can discern is the word i think i would like to use for that i can discern that a large bull market is coming and so i want to be in position for that i'm all for paying off debt right now i'm not interested in paying off like a three to five percent debt if that's what you guys have I'm more interested in investing in cryptocurrency and then taking profits in a year and a half and then paying it all off at once. Now, if you're paying 11, 12, 15, 20%, yes, get rid of that debt. But, and I'm not saying take out a loan. I'm saying if you already have debt in that regard. Um, same thing with the stock market. I think the stock market's going to rally. You're going to make 20 or 30% over there. I think you can make two or 300% with what I'm recommending in the cryptocurrency market, at least in the coming bull market. So, I would not recommend selling all your stocks and getting into crypto, but what you could do is you could say, hey, look, I've already got a huge portion of my investment portfolio in the stock market, so I'm not going to put any more into my stocks for the next year, and instead I'm going to put everything I have monthly for investment into dollar cost averaging into crypto. And now let's get something clear. If you've got no debt, you've got your retirement secured, and you know that you're going to be able to retire, because that's like goal number one, making sure you can retire. From there, yes, you grow your wealth. First and foremost, make sure you can actually retire if you want to and when you want to. If you're at that place where you've got a large enough stock portfolio that you can do that, then you're dealing with more play money. If you're going to survive, then that's where you can start making riskier bets. And you could sell some of your stocks, especially if they're in a large profit. So would I recommend it to the average investor? No. If you know what you're doing, then yeah, you can do that. Just remember that one of the, that I'll tell you from experience, I've sold positions too early to try and jump into another investment and the jumping around ends up screwing you over in the long run. It's much better to keep what you have where it is and then find new money to put into new investments that is what i have learned from my experience here working in the markets i've been working in cryptocurrency markets since i was 16 years old and i've made a lot of dumb mistakes i still make stupid mistakes that i know better than to do right we all do that so don't think that you're going to get to being here for six years like me and you're not going to make any mistakes don't think you're going to invest for 30 years and you're not going to make any mistakes as i tell my son and as my father told me Making a mistake one time is an accident. Making a mistake a second time, well, you should, just shouldn't do that. <laughs> it's foolishness. You know, I'm a little bit crass, believe it or not. And uh, so I, I tend to kind of tell myself, making a mistake one time is a lesson. Making a mistake a second time is, a, is just, you know, kind of dumb. Don't do the same thing twice if you know it's wrong. So let's read chat here for just a second. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why I think that this rally is not over. Let's see. Uh... Take out a loan to top up your contribution and then use the tax return to pay off the loan. Mm. Be careful with that. But uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of making of taking out debt to make investments. You know, we built, a, we built this entire channel and this entire company bootstrapped. Never took out a single penny of debt for it. And it can be done. Now, if you're trying to open a $500 million factory, I understand that you're going to need a more, not a mortgage, but a business line of credit or something to build that. But not so much. 
Fool you once, shame on me. Fool you twice, shame on you. Yes, exactly. Um, Chinese New Year in a couple of weeks, so you must grab some. Yes, Chinese New Year is coming up, and we'll talk about that as well. Money printer goes brr. Make sure to have some assets. That's right. Naked Director said, currently 65% crypto, 35% stocks. If you if 65% of your experience is in the crypto markets and 35% of it is in the stock market, then go for it. I'll tell you right now, I have a lot more of my portfolio in crypto than I do in stocks because I'm much more experienced in stock in crypto, but I want to change. I want to change that in the long run. I'm not too interested in changing that distribution right now because there's a bull market coming. So I don't mind having a huge amount of money in crypto. But I'll tell you what, when crypto tops out and goes back to all-time high, I'm going to be taking profits and I'm going to be putting some of those profits in the stock market. All right. Now, if you remember, we we're back over here and I was talking about intuition and we were still in this sideways triangle pattern right here and we started a breakout and I just realized, you know, sometimes this is kind of what I'm talking about. Your brain subconsciously does pattern recognition without even telling your prefrontal cortex, which is where your conscious thought takes place. What it was, I see it now. I was saying right here on this candlestick, I think that Bitcoin's about to go through a breakout. I think it's got some bullishness behind it. And uh, I was talking about intuition and how after some experience, you have some intuition. I just saw it, but I, now I know what my brain was computing. There's a symmetrical triangle pattern right here, and we were breaking bullish out of it. I call that chart vision. I did not even realize that that symmetrical triangle pattern was there consciously. But apparently I did subconsciously because we broke bullish out of it. And that's where I started saying, huh, I think we're about to go through a rally. Now, one thing I will point out right now is that we did just put in a spinning top. Going through a corrective movement. And so we'll see what happens from there. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Very low volume. Did you see that? Bitcoin jumped from 43,820 up to 43,875. $50 jump. That means the spread is huge right now, which means we can move very quickly right now, which means we might see a massive rally right now. Sometimes I wish I could talk even faster than I can because there are times where I'm watching Bitcoin do something live and I'm like, I just want to get this out here before it happens. And then by the time I'm done with the sentence, it's already happened. I'm like, crap. Now look, I saw it. I saw it. I can't, I need to be, Elon Musk talked about that one time about we are limited in how quickly we can put information out into the world by how quickly we can type or how quickly we can talk. And there are times where I wish I could speak even quicker, but we're seeing a huge, huge valley right now between the buys and the sells. That's why you're seeing the market jump around 10 bucks. It means that there are very small order uh, buy and sell walls. I don't have the order books up, but I can tell you right now, the order books are very thin which means that a lot of volatility can happen very quickly, which means the bulls can make a lot of gains very quickly if that's what they so choose to do. On the hourly chart, we are as well looking at a buy signal, which if we close the hourly chart up here, will end up being a confirmed buy signal. Trend catcher will likely turn green very quickly thereafter. We've already rallied $150 just from where we were a few minutes ago. We're hit, we've hit the take profit here on the um, one minute buy signal for Lux Algo. Lux Algo works phenomenally on every time frame, so don't forget to use it on every time frame. And we're currently testing resistance. And this is where we need to make sure that longer term meets shorter term analysis. We're currently testing resistance on this downtrending level of resistance. This happens quite a bit. Just so you know, this is a very common formation. I don't have a name for this pattern, but I really should name it. There might be a name for it. You guys can tell me if you know what it is, but I've seen it over and over. The market will go through a bull pennant or a pennant of some kind. It'll break the wrong way, the unfortunate way, normally the bearish direction, out of the pennant. It'll fall down to a new level. It'll create a bull flag instead of a bull pennant. Then it'll rally back up to the original resistance. On a bear flag, it might look something like this. Market's jumping around in here. Breaks bullish for a second, then comes back down, then breaks bearish once again. It's kind of a little fake out. It's, uh, I suppose you could call it a bear trap, but it's a little bit more than a bear trap. This is essentially a bear trap right now if we're able to break above this downtrending level of resistance. If we break above this downtrending level of resistance, gloves are off. You're going to 45 more than likely. And by the way, that's why I, accept, uh, why I am excited to have a partnership with Apex Exchange. If you guys didn't know, today's episode of Coffee and Crypto is brought to you in part by Apex Dex. Apex is my favorite decentralized exchange for trading Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, especially with leverage and margin. You have to be careful with leverage. Make sure you're using proper stop losses. You should never be liquidated ever because that means you aren't using a stop loss. So make sure you're using your stop losses correctly and you know what you're doing. But if you do, Apex is my number one choice for decentralized exchanges in the market. And it's also my number one choice for margin trading and for leverage trading here in the cryptocurrency market. If you're familiar with Bybit, you'll be very familiar with Apex. But the issue is many of you guys that have been operating on Bybit no longer can because the CFTC is coming after not only Bybit, but also the individuals that are trading through a VPN on Bybit. So you want to be careful with that. 
Um, I don't have anything against VPN, but I don't want you to get screwed over by the United States government. So if you're trying to trade with leverage, I would recommend the safer option where you're still going to get access to the exact same functionality. You're still going to get access to large amounts of leverage, which will allow you to make large amounts of profit if you know what you're doing. And if you're profitable, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not a profitable trader, you're just going to lose large amounts of money. But if you know what you're doing and you're profitable, you're going to make large amounts of money. All right. If you give it enough time. And if you know what you're doing, if you're continuing to learn, and I highly recommend that if you want to do leverage trading, that you sign up for Apex. I think it is the number one place in the entire cryptocurrency market to do margin trading. If you go on over to CoinMarketCap, go to Exchanges, go to Dex, you're going to see Apex is right here sitting at number nine. It is the newest exchange in all of the top 10, and it has grown rapidly, rapidly. It is the only one of the exchanges anywhere near the top 10 that was created anytime during the last bear market moving into this bull market. It launched January of last year, and I believe that it is an, it is an incredible exchange. I have used it, and I'm very excited to be partnered with them. So if you're interested in signing up, you can use the link in the description box down below. Back to Bitcoin, because we are moving right now. Bitcoin fell back down to this level of support. Notice what's happening here. I was going to talk about the longer term some more, but something is happening on the short term, so we'll talk about that. There's a lot of longer term analysis coming in today's afternoon video on climate of crypto, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But right now, what's going on is that Bitcoin was in a symmetrical triangle pattern. Those two trend lines extrapolated, show up right here. And as you can see, technical analysis works. Whenever somebody says, technical analysis doesn't work, it's so stupid. I just show them a chart like this. And I'm like, well, how do you think that the market shows where to have its tops and bottoms right here? Well, it doesn't make any sense without the context of the history. Look out on the 15 minute chart. Where did these trend lines come from? Well, they're the downtrending level of resistance, uptrending level of support. That's the way the market works. You know why? Because the technical analysts are the ones that are the most successful traders. If you want to be a trader and you want to be successful, you've got to be a technical analyst. There is no other choice. You don't get to be a successful trader without being a successful technical analyst. It just doesn't happen. And it's difficult to become a successful investor without technical analysis. It can be done, but you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities if you don't invest in your education on technical analysis. So we're sitting right here in between these two levels, our downtrending level of support or uptrending level or downtrending level of resistance, uptrending level of support. And so now Bitcoin is going to spend the next probably 20 minutes painting a little bull flag right here and then hopefully we'll break bullish out of it. If we do that, or at least so long as we stay up here above like, you know, 435, we're going to have a confirmed buy signal on the hourly chart and that will be exceptionally bullish for the market. By the way, we could have seen this coming also because there was a long lower wick here on this green candlestick, very bullish upper wick, uh, candle body, I'm sorry, engulfed this previous candle body. We had a red candlestick spinning top, then a green candlestick coming out of it, spinning top signaled indecision. The green candlestick on the other side signaled that the indecision turned bullish, which meant that we were seeing a bullish reversal. We also saw a green, red, green formation, which is one of our primary candlestick formations that we keep an eye out for. We saw three red crows over here. One, two, three red crows. Bitcoin turned around and bullishly engulfed those with those two candlesticks. Volume is increasing right here. MACD is converging bullish on itself. MACD bullish cross coming in next candle body. RSI broke above 50. This is a prime time to be looking at a trade on the hourly chart. And if you are looking to trade this movement that's probably about to come, there's probably about to be a large breakout to the upside. Where? Probably to about $45,000. If you're looking to trade that movement, it's about a $1,200 movement that's probably about to be coming in on Bitcoin then I do believe the very best place to do so is over on Apex. So if you want to sign up for Apex right now, you've probably got 20 or 30 minutes before that movement happens. If it happens, to go get set up over there, make sure to go sign up with the link in the description box down below. It's a $1,000 movement, 2.36% movement. If you use a little bit of leverage on that, you can get a lot more than that. Do be careful because leverage, if you think about it, is a form of debt. So please be careful. But I am not against debt so long as it's used wisely. Make sure that you are being wise in the way that you use it. Make sure that you are in control of it rather than it being in control of you. Be financially sovereign over said debt and you'll be okay. All right. Let's read a little bit of chat. Whatever BS they use to go after Bybit users, they can use that BS to go after users using a, dick, a DEX. What's the difference? Well, the difference is there is no KYC on a decentralized exchange and there's not really any way to do it because who are you going to serve a subpoena to? The algorithm? The smart contract? Hey, smart contract. Subpoena. Give us the names. Doesn't really work that way. There's no KYC, and if there is any KYC that comes, then we can reevaluate that at the time. Um, but right now, that's just not the way it works because it is a decentralized exchange, and, sen and since it's a decentralized exchange, there's no sign-up. There's no registering. That's just kind of the way that the cryptocurrency market has decided that its industry is going to run. 
The government might not like that, but to be quite honest with you, there's not a whole lot the government can do about that unless they want to create a task force to track down every single person's wallet address and then figure out and then try and hire a few tens of thousands of people to sit there and manually try and figure out whose wallet address belongs to who. Um, and could that happen? Yeah, it could. Anything can happen. But at the moment, we seem to be pretty safe from that reality. And if it does happen, then we will t then we will cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, I don't think there's anything um, illegal or against using a decentralized exchange that has leverage. The government, as far as I am aware, has not said anything to that regard. Billy the Kid 275 says, been following you a couple months. Really love your content. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Bjorn BCY said, you already talking fast, bro. I know I do. Sometimes I wish I could talk faster. There's just so much information I want to share with you guys. Can't a large company just buy out the majority of Bitcoin? What happens then? Curtis Colson said. That's a good question. Um, do you know any company that has half a trillion dollars on disposal that it can buy something with? By the way, whenever you buy Bitcoin, the price goes up. So half a trillion dollars would not get you very far on Bitcoin. You would just end up putting half a trillion dollars of buy pressure on the market. And you would send Bitcoin to a couple hundred thousand dollars. And so you would get even less Bitcoin than you thought. Bitcoin is a large enough market at this point that there's not really any one entity in the world that has the that has the liquid assets to do that. You have to start looking at nations and you have to start looking at literally the largest companies on the planet. You're talking um, Alphabet and Apple and Amazon. Amazon, Alphabet and Apple collectively don't have enough money to buy even 20 or 30 percent of the cryptocurrency that's out there, of the Bitcoin that's out there. There's $857 billion in market capitalization. If you were to get to buy 1 million Bitcoin, 1 20th, 5% of the Bitcoin supply, you would need $50 billion if the market didn't move, at least $40 billion, $42, $43 billion if the market didn't move. But since the market would move, because you're not going to find that much OTC, you're going to have to go on exchange to get some of that. You're going to end up moving the market probably to double, at least, when you're putting $40 billion of buy pressure. And when you do that, the Bitcoin gets much more expensive and you get even less. So if you could find somebody that wanted to dump $50 billion into Bitcoin, I would be very shocked if they were able to get even more than 5% of the total circulating supply. And by the way, having Bitcoin doesn't actually give you any kind of like voting rights as it would if you had preferred stock. It just means that you have Bitcoin. That's it. You Obviously, you have the ability to dump it on the market and crash the market. You could do that. So you can manipulate it. But you need tens of billions of dollars to really make any major move. The whales... When you talk about the whales, the whales oftentimes, if they are going to move the market in a, in a significant way, they have to do their movement. If they're trying to manipulate it, they have to make their movement at the exact right time because even a whale moving hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin might only have the ability to move the market a few hundred to maybe a thousand dollars at most. So I'm not very concerned about that personally. Not very concerned about that at all. And same thing with the mining. If you wanted to get somebody to have 51% of the mining, they would have to spend probably a half a trillion dollars. Um, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> BR Rounder said, my hillbilly ears can't listen much faster. <laughs> Bjorn BCY said, and big respect to you. Your channel is one of the best at the moment on crypto YouTube. Very interesting and no BS talk. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Grand Rufy Incorporated said, good morning, Jeb. Looks like it took down another comment of mine. Just joining because we just closed on the new property. Good for you, man. That's awesome. Is that rental property? Is that like... But as far as don't tell anything that you don't want to tell, but that's amazing. I wonder what kind of property. That's great. Someone asked if they've read the Bitcoin Standard yet. Great book, IMO. Yes, Bitcoin Standard is a great book. Absolutely recommend it. Let's see. All right. How about the quantum computer poses a risk? Here's the deal about quantum computing. Quantum computing works with qubits. A qubit is a quantum bit. It's basically an entangled... It's basically an entangled subatomic particle this is at the exact same time because the computer which is the qubit can be in multiple states at once quantum computers are not really set up to interact with the way that the current computing infrastructure works so to build a quantum computer that could even interact with the blockchain would be a feat of engineering and the second thing is that bitcoin operates that bitcoin operates on the basis of adjusted difficulty every two weeks the difficulty adjusts so if you plug a quantum computer into the network and all of a sudden it's got 10% of the mining power then well first of all whoever owns the quantum computer is obviously going to make a lot of money 
But the next week, it adjusts, and all of a sudden, they're basically put back in their place. And you get into an arms race where one person creates a quantum computer. It, you give it six months, and 20 people have a quantum computer mining Bitcoin. So the difficulty on Bitcoin would increase by probably 10 orders of magnitude. I mean, it would literally probably increase by at least 100,000%. But at the same time, a lot of people would end up having those quantum computers. And for a time, you might run into an issue where, okay, there's centralization where only super powerful research organizations have quantum computers. But let me just tell you something. As soon as private business gets a hold of the idea, wait a minute, we can make a quantum computer and we can sell this thing for 10 million bucks to the highest bidder, you start bringing down the cost of entry into that realm very quickly. And you end up seeing something happen. Um, you end up seeing a technological revolution being driven in quantum computing because of Bitcoin. Could it destabilize the market for a time? Maybe. Would it lead to the market being overthrown and destroyed? No, I don't think so. Because it is hard-coded into Bitcoin's blockchain and it would never be changed, that the difficulty doesn't change. Um, so I don't really have too much of a concern about a quantum computing attack. Really not worried about it. Fort Worth, Texas, building F-35s at Lockheed and day trading. Let's go, baby. That is awesome. That sounds like, I mean, okay. So we basically got Iron Man in chat. Cryptos for Liberty said, when is Jeb writing a book? I want to write the book Financial Sovereignty. I've wanted to do that for about a year. And uh, I don't know if this is exactly the point in my life that I'm going to do that. But at some point, it might be five years from now. Do look forward to that because I believe that will be coming. All right. I am going to have to go ahead and go, guys. But right now, it looks like Bitcoin is trying to fail and fall out of the symmetrical triangle pattern. Keep a close eye on it. If we're able to close the hourly candlestick up here above 43.5 at least, then you're going to be seeing a Lux Algo buy signal confirm. If we're able to see that confirm, that might give us just the buy, the buy pressure that we need to continue rallying, get the trend catcher to confirm, and then reset and go all the way back up to all-time high. I think that we are going to be able to see, sorry, yearly high, not all-time high. I think there's a lot of bullishness to be on the lookout for, so make sure to stay tuned for all of that. And if you guys have not signed up for Lux Algo yet, you've seen me use it today, you can sign up for it with the link in the description box down below. Get a huge discount because of our link. You can get 30% off at checkout. So make sure you, you sign up down there. If you're looking to do leverage trading, best place to do it, Apex Dex. Links down below. And also make sure if you have not already to sign up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It's an ever-growing catalog of dozens of videos, over 10 hours of content teaching you everything you need to know about technical analysis so that you can be successful in the cryptocurrency markets. I do greatly appreciate all of you for tuning in. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. But before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video peace oh i got a real good feeling